I'm Nancy Kaminsky. Today we're going back into the kitchen and this painting is called Breakfast Anyone. We're not going to scramble the eggs and maybe by the time we're through, you wish we had. We're going to do the usual thing, stain the canvas, burnt umber and solvent, preferably kerosene. Don't rub too hard. Lightly and not too runny. Marvelous. Now we put in our grits. In quarters first, please, like this. Like that. Now in painting eggs, sometimes you'll find that simple forms are much more difficult because it's, it's rather difficult to create um, an effect with a form that is so simple and so smooth. But we do it with color. Fine, now, let's put our large bowl with the eggs in first. It goes in this corner, and again, we draw the square first, like this. This bowl has a very interesting lip. I wish we hadn't done it so interesting, but you'll survive. It has a thing like that, which is rather attractive. Gives it a little interest because you don't want just a plain vanilla bowl. There we are, like that. Fine. This goes down like this. Let's cut the bowl in like this on both sides and round it off the same as the top, like that. Now there's our bowl. Next, we have a lovely coffee pot. That goes in this corner. There again, it has this kind of shape. Use your, your lines as much as possible. That's what they're there for, to guide you and use them. This has an interesting top like this. Remember that, I believe that has a little, there, it has a little thing on top that way. It has a spout, what else? And a handle. Now there again, it's an interesting pot. Now we have objects actually in front of that, a plate. And remember, draw the back objects first completely and then put the other objects in front of it. This is too, too big. Cut it down just a wee bit like that. Fine. Now we have a plate here like this. Now we're seeing this in perspective. So it's like that, wide in the middle and narrow on the sides. This line goes right in the middle like that. Now because you were watching and I want you to be able to see what I'm going to put in the plate, I'm going to erase this. And this is why this underpainting is so invaluable and so important. It's very easy to take off with tea paper like that. I had to erase it. You don't have to, but I wanted you to see the eggs in the middle. It's a broken egg. It's a very interesting uh, technique. We have the yolk like that. And we have two shells like this. Now, in this one, the shading, of course, helps. And the other shell because it was broken unevenly, we have little bits of things like that. Pieces showing, ragged pieces of shell showing like that. Now when we shade that, it will make much more sense. Right now it doesn't make much sense. Fine, let's put the eggs in the bowl. Now, please don't line your eggs up like little soldiers. This is a problem that we all have. I do it myself. 
So let's start with the eggs on the bottom. We have one like that and one like this. As you know, eggs are not perfectly round. They have one end that's a little larger, like that. One going that way, one going this way. Remember, they're in the bowl. So we must have some eggs that we only see a part of them. Let's put this one on top because that's underneath, right? Like that. Now we have another one over here, like this. And then we see the back of one like that. I think it, uh, oh, well, there's another one. Oh, dear. Well, it's a dozen of eggs. Now we have two on the t on the, uh, at the base or on the table like this, which brings down the color and completes the, the composition. And we have another one like this in front. I have a feeling we could have done without those, but it's, we're going to do it anyway, if we have to suffer. You do suffer for your art, no matter how much I tell you, how I simplify it, you will suffer, but it's marvelous. I always say that painting a picture is like having a baby. Once the paint is going, you're ready to do another. There we are. Now, we've got the drawing in. We're going to shade it. The light is coming from the left, so we will shade the right side of the paint carefully, not too dripping. Pick up your brush and very lightly and drip it onto your paper like this. I don't want you losing your form because if you have to keep drawing and redrawing, you get a little discouraged and especially when you're anxious to get started painting. Like this. I love the paintings uh, or the drawings in sepia. I think they're very interesting this way. And we have developed them in, in classes. One day we will do one just in sepia. It would be fun as an experiment. It's also good, good um, training. Shade the inside of the shell. And remember, the light's coming from the right. This shell is shading inside like this. And the same thing here. It's round and it's deep. When we paint that, you can see much better. Shade the yolk, the coffee pot, a little crooked, I think. Oh, well, it's, I keep saying these are all Italian. You must think that Italians have all crooked pots and pottery. But they say that's part of the charm. I don't know. Like that. And inside the handle, that way. I think that's all. Fine. Now, we are finished the drawing. We know where the light's coming from. Let's start to paint. As always, we start with the background, and we start with the dark tone. And in this case, we start on the right side. This is a very uh, interesting study of color, warm and cool tones. And one of my favorite color combinations, this lovely blue, which was also um, a favorite of Van Gogh. He used a lot of blue with this marvelous yellow. Uh, outline your objects. Try not to lose your bowl, especially if you're a beginning painter because it gets to be a little worrying. And what I want to do is to, to give you as little to worry about as possible while you're creating. It's a wonderful thing to say that you're creating. As I said before, it gives you a lot of out. There we are. Go all the way over like this. Use flat strokes. And don't be afraid to put the paint on. I would use the bottom, the uh, dark tone across the bottom like this in this case. Now we go to the middle tone, which goes in the middle. What else? These are things you will remember. Because we do the same thing over and over again, and you will remember it. When you become experienced, 
you can make your own changes. But you will know what you're doing and you will have something to start from. But for now, do as I tell you. Going around these objects can be a bit of a pill. There we are. I do think that coffee pot is peculiar. Across the bottom, like this. Now, let's go to our light tone. This is called Tones of Yellow Ochre. Yellow ochre is not an unusual or sophisticated color. It's, it's a very ordinary color, actually. And it's pretty standard in all, all brands of paint. And it's a very familiar color. And it's, it's been mixed with white and a little orange for the light tone. Incidentally, when we lighten a color, almost without exception, we lighten it with light, with white, and Naples yellow. We never use white in a color without yellow because it creates a very pasty, weak color. Chalky color. And we want a vibrant color, and yellow keeps it vibrant and full of life. Oops. Let's get that in there. Clean it up. Fine. Now, we don't want it like that, so let's take some light tone like this and some dark tone over here, like this, in between. Don't be afraid to even go over your object a little bit, because you won't lose it. I would like to add a little burnt orange, which will be one of the colors in the painting. And a bit of blue again. This is the beauty about pre-mixing your colors. You can do this while your background is wet, and I, I recommend it. It keeps your painting harmonious and relating all the objects with the background. Let's put our base in, or our shadows, under our objects. We'll do that right now. A little purple up there like this. Go under the eggs, like that. Under the bowl. Now, admittedly, I've been painting a while, so my strokes are much easier. They flow better, only from practice. But when you've been painting a little while, you have the same facility. But don't be discouraged if you're not flipping around like I am. I mean, while I'm painting, anyway. All right, just leave that for the moment. Now, let's go to our coffee pot. Start with the dark tone at the top. Like this. Go down this way. And then over like this, and on top of the spout with the dark tone, that area is not getting any light, and all the way down to the base. Now, of course, the rest of the pot is behind the blue bow, so naturally you don't, you stop there. I think my coffee pot's going to be a little fatter than I planned, but Worry not. It looks like the kind of coffee pots that the old miners used to use. They had them in the westerns, you know. Fine. Middle tone. In the top. Like that. On this lip. And down. Let's go to the handle, which is the middle tone. Then the light tone, like this. 
Now I can straighten that out in just a moment for you so that it looks for real there. This is the light tone. I'm going to outline that in purple so you can see that. Now you will be able to develop this a little more. Middle tone and light tone right here. And right here, I'm catching the light. Let's put the dark tone under here. We have a little, t the little hat. Like that. Now let's outline that in a little purple. I picked up some blue on the way in to emphasize the shape. And a little dark space place right here in the spout, like that. There we are. Now let's leave that for just a moment. Let's go to the bowl. We start with the dark tone on the right. Watch the lip. It's terribly important to retain that. You see what I mean about the blues with, this, with these tones, how effective it is and interesting. We start with the medium tone. We've got the dark tone. Down on the side like this, and over, flip it off if you've made a mistake, which I've just done, and underneath here like this, this is the dark tone, we're still with the dark tone, now these are tones of blue, but we never mix blue without a little orange to keep it a little bit grayed down. Let's go to the middle tone in the bow, like this. I'm going to clean it up in just a moment, but for now, get all the color on, all the tones, like this. Lovely flowing strokes, like this. I'm going to outline in that in the little purple and especially around the eggs, like that. On the right side, and the bottom. Like that. I want to emphasize this one right here. Okay, let's leave that for the moment. I want to come back to that pot, but I'd like to work on the eggs because eggs are something that you haven't done before and we've done vessels and what have you. So I'm not too concerned. Oh, I am a little worried about the side here. I must do this. There, let's leave that. Fine. Now let's go, um, to the eggs. We start with the dark tone on the right side. Just a second. See, a typical artist. We start on the right side like this. Put your dark tone around the egg in the shape of the egg like that. That's the first thing you do. Put your shadows in always. Always work from dark to light. Also, it retains the shape. Now we're going to use the middle tone on the other side. Before we do that, let's go to the light tone. Like this. Mm. The light is coming from the left like that. I remember that one of my students didn't want to paint the eggs. She told me she was allergic to them. I said, you're not going to eat them, you're just going to paint them. But she wouldn't paint them. 
So as an artist, you have that prerogative. You can say, I refuse to paint them on the grounds that it makes me plain sick. There we are. So she ended up painting oranges, which she liked very much. Let's bring them over. Oops. Now these may look like eggs too because I've told you so, but they do, this is the general shape of them. And, and there are brown eggs, and I don't want to hear about them right now though. Now we're going to outline those eggs in little purple. God, what would we do without purple? I don't know. When we darken a color, we always add purple. It's much better darkening agent. When I was learning, no one told me, so I added umber, which is brown. And of course, I ended up with a dirty brown color. But with purple, it darkens your color without destroying it. And it adds another interesting dimension to your painting. Always use purple as a darkening agent, remember. Let's emphasize the line around the eggs a little more. Like that. Fine, let's leave those for the moment. Oops. To the uh, eggs on the right. Like this. Try to... Now, in this corner, there's a little problem here. It's very dangerous in that your egg can be standing up on end. Forget it. Be very careful. Have them lying down. I'm sure there's some trick eggs that can do this, but nobody will believe you. They better do it right. Now, oh, let's outline those in a little purple. Like that. We go to the plate. I want to come back to that pot. It's a little weak. Now, the plate is an off color. It's actually off-white. This is the most difficult part. But we can do it, and it's much easier for you because you'll be able to stand right in front of your canvas. Fill the hoe plate like this. First, with, this, with the white tone, in this case, the dark tone of white, like that. Oops, I went down the other way. Excuse me. There we are. Let's put a little purple under that. And we're going to put our highlight on the edge of our plate now like this. We're going to do the egg yolk, yellow ochre on one side, like this, and then a little medium tone, like that. It's a very good egg, very fresh egg. And then the Ma Naples yellow on the other side, like that. Uh, in doing the eggshells, let's leave that for just a moment. In doing the eggshells, the light is coming from the left, and this creates a shadow inside. So we're going to do this. That's why it's important to have purple underneath. Like that. And then shade it a little bit to the to light. On. In about a moment, you will see exactly what I'm trying to do. Now, it looks very strange, and I don't blame you for saying... Oh, my goodness. You can see why I have a feeling that we should have had scrambled eggs and left the shells, put the shells in the sink. There. Now, we take the light tone or the white tone, and we're going to put the feeling of a shell like this. Go around the edge like that. Like that.
And in this shell, we're getting it on the inside. It doesn't have any fragments, but, it, it, but the light is on the, the dark actually is on the inside because the light does not get in there. And it's like that. Round this off a little bit. And then shade this a little bit because there is a little light here like that. Uh, I want to put the highlights on the, I think you get the idea, I want to give you the highlights um, on the objects, on the egg. There's a little spot of um, liquid in there and here too. Well, let's put the highlights on our bow with a little Naples yellow. Please don't use pure white in anything. And the A color, believe it or not, has a lot of Naples yellow into it. Oops, I picked up a little blue right here. And the coffee pot has highlight. Like that. And I really would like to touch up our spout. It's a little weak. Oops. There we are, and right here, like that. Put a bit of orange right here like this. Well, that's it for today, and now for our signature. Goodbye for now.